Okay, so here we are up underneath 4.7 liter Dodge Ram 1500. Um, you can see the here's the lower radiator hose that goes onto the thermostat housing, and I've got a little leak right there at the bottom. I've kind of wiped most of it off, so I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it's enough that it, uh, you can see where it's kind of blown over everything down here. When it gets hot, you can look at the lower radiator hose. I am going to replace the thermostat housing and the gaskets just to be sure. Because like I said, Dodge and all their infinite wisdom makes you take this off. So of course you're going to have to drain all your radiator fluid. And since I've got to do that, I want to make sure I've got all bases covered. So that I don't have to come back and do it again. Because like the freaking idiots that they are, instead of putting it on the top like everybody else, they had to put it at the bottom and make one of the easiest jobs a pain in the butt. So... Let me uh, start taking this apart and I'll show you. Okay, so first I've got my pan down here. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm going to catch the uh, radiator fluid in and I'm just going to loosen, see if I can't loosen up the hose and uh, start the fluid draining that way. Okay, so I've loosened the clamp and now I'm going to see if I can't shake this over here. Right now I'm not too concerned that it has to come all the way off if I could get a good coolant flow out of here. I'd just let it leak out. Okay, it's an 8mm. I'm just going to loosen the housing so that I can kind of let this fluid, this coolant drain out. Um, a little slower and not have it just come flood out all at once. At least that's my hope. Sorry for the camera work. It's uh, impossible to get a uh, tripod up under here so I have to hold the camera using one hand. All right. There's a bolt on the top and one on the bottom. There we go. Try to get this thing to catch all the coolant as much as I can. So I don't have a giant mess all over the floor. But see, this is a total waste. I don't care. I've owned the past five years. I've owned Dodges, Fords, and Chevys, GM products. And I see some of the stupidest things on Dodges. I, I just, I just can't understand the reasoning behind this. It's so wasteful. This should be the easiest thing to fix in the world. It should take five minutes and instead it's just a huge hassle. Alright, now I get off my soapbox. Alright, I've let it drain for a while. Now I've got the thermostat housing completely unbolted. So we'll see if we can't get the rest of the fluid out of here. And there's the thermostat.
and here's the thermostat housing pulled out and uh, doesn't appear to be bad I'm probably wasting my money replacing it but I'm going to anyway just because like I said I'd, I don't want to take a chance and have to go through this again all right I'm gonna have to clean this up a little bit and I'll be back in a second here's the new housing and here's the new seal for the thermostat um, and I was able to clean everything up off the flange on the truck and now I'll get all of everything assembled and real quick see if I can show this to you if you look here on the inside of the housing you see an indentation and out here along the outer edge there's a smaller indentation I'm trying to see if I can get enough light there's the outer small indentation here's the inner bigger indentation and how that works is is when you put the thermostat in you have to have the gasket seal lined up and this knob not sure what it's called somebody can probably tell me it looks like it's some kind of pass-through hole lined up to where they correspond so that the, the big spot here matches up with the big inner indentation and the little knob on the seal lines up lines up with the outer it's not that big a deal you just got to pay attention and get those lined up okay so I've got everything put up here now we're just gonna see if we can't get everything tightened down snug you're dealing with plastic even though it has a metal uh, we'll get the hose back on here Clamp. <sighs> Sorry, I tried to do this one handed. Excuse the camera work. alright sorry I had to stop I needed both hands for that I got the clamp back on I don't ever like to put it back in the same spot I like to get it to where I have some raised area so that I can get it good and tight um, but anyhow now it's time to mix up some coolant and start filling it back up and seeing if it holds okay I think this is one of the few substitutes you can use for the Dodge coolant. They're very particular. You don't ever just get the green crap and mix it in. I don't know if you can see here. It says Xerox G05 Automaker approved for use in Chrysler Dodge Jeep 2002 through 2012 model years. Well, this is an 03 Dodge Ram. So I should be good to go. And you mix this 50-50 with distilled water. And I do these things to a T. 
I don't want to affect um, the water pump or any other internal workings that may be affected by using the wrong coolant and you definitely no matter who you use or what vehicle you have you don't ever want to mix the two and that's what I already have in there so I'm going to keep it I brought this over here to show you the upper radiator hose right here where they have a bleed hole um, is about where Dodge should have put the dang thermostat housing where everybody else in the world has it but you take this out um, it's a uh, what is it a 5 16 hex you just unscrew the plug and you'll fill until that starts bleeding out and in the process I'll run it uh, with the heater on high to make sure I get everything through the heater core and don't get an air bubble I'm gonna keep the truck up on the ramps to keep everything tilting up so that the air will work its way up here's where you fill on the 03 Dodge Ram with the 4.7 you use the uh, the overflow container that's where you also fill there is no other radiator cap and uh, let me get my solution my coolant mixed up and I'll start okay here I am adding my coolant mix I just put a funnel in to make it a little easier since I'm doing it one-handed I haven't started the vehicle yet because I know it's going to take a lot and I just pre-mixed in a two-quart jug I have did half and half and you can see it going down in the reservoir there so I'm gonna need okay here I am with the next jug so we're getting up to about a gallon you can mix it a little stronger than 50 50 it says you can go up to 70 percent coolant and uh, get a little bit a uh, few more degrees freezing and a few more degrees before it boils over but uh, so I keep it somewhere between 50 and 70 I don't measure exactly okay coming out of the weep hole here big time wasn't paying attention to that so now I'm gonna start uh, heating the vehicle up and Start seeing if we can't draw that uh, coolant through the system. As you can see, it's still getting sucked down, so I'm going to have to add some more. Okay, this is my fourth edition. This is getting us up to two gallons. See, what a waste. Absolute waste on Dodge's part. I bet I've still got more to go. Nope, looks like that might do it. I'm holding. Two gallons. Ridiculous. Alright. Still not completely hot. Um, heater's not blowing too hot. I'm going to go back and see if I can bleed this a little more.
that. As you can see, it's bubbling a lot less. But every once in a while, there's still some bubbles coming out. get hot air out of my heater, which I can hear water sloshing around, coolant sloshing around behind the dash. I know there's air in the heater, uh, in the heating coil, and uh, I was hoping that bleeding it while doing this thermostat job would help me, but it might not. I might have to flush my uh, the heater element out. That'll be another video I can make. 